All right, I am falling asleep, so real quick, let's do a book report on Man in the Rockefeller Suit by Mark Seal. Story opens with Clark Rockefeller, who is recently apprehended after the kidnapping of his own daughter. Reason being, he divorced his wife, who is now kicking him out of the house. So on this one day he has with his daughter, he chooses to take her away. Now on trial, it is revealed that Clark Rockefeller is also being charged with a murder that he committed supposedly over 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago, in 1985. The year is currently 2008, by the way, which is three years prior to the writing of this book. Okay, back to the story. Um, Clark Rockefeller is on trial for kidnapping and murder. Now, you have to wonder, how does a man of such a prestigious name take so long to be caught? Well, it turns out that the man who claims to be Clark Rockefeller is not Clark Rockefeller. In fact, Clark Rockefeller is a fake person. We follow a con artist whose real name is Carl Gerhardstreiter, who is not American in any way, shape, or form, other than his high hopes and dreams. Um... He's actually a German who was born in Seigsdorf, Germany. Um, his journey begins around halfway through his senior year of high school. He no longer wants to live in this little town where nothing comes in, nothing comes out. He lives in a poor family. His dad is a struggling artist. His mother stays at home. Um, and he's heard of the American lifestyle. He wants the American lifestyle. And... It all starts when he comes across an American couple as he's walking home in the rain, Elmer and Jean Kelm. Um, and his persona, his handsomeness, and his quick wit quickly get him in contact with them. And um, he doesn't communicate with them for, I'd say, another five years. And this is when he's already come to America and just how he got to America he flew in claiming to be a student which he was initially he moved to Berlin Connecticut and he he was in his senior year of high school but this was not true because he was already past the age of 18 while he was here um, he came in contact with was the name of that family the Savios so the Savios kept him uh, for a while and he later left and this is because he was way too flamboyant he soon became ignorant to what the family wanted of him which is simply just to be a decent human he never did his laundry he never showed up to dinner on time it was just sitting cold on his desk and his desk was the coffee table in the living room which he took over because he was him um following his brief time in connecticut he soon found himself in uh wisconsin he was attending college he applied and he made it um but here he went by a different name he decided to change his name to carl Christian Gerhardt, because he wanted to be less and less German as time went on. He wanted to become an American. Um, he also changed his character. Rather than claiming to be um, from a rich family in Germany. Um, oh no, he still claimed to be from a rich family in Germany. However, rather than claiming that his dad was an artist, he claimed that his dad was um, a high-ranking member for the Volkswagen company. Um, or his first day of school, he came in with golf clubs, uh, in a full suit, and he took over the majority of his dorm room. Um, he wasn't here for very long. He always tried to flirt with a lot of the girls, and reason being, he wanted to get married very quickly. Um, at this point, he was in his early 20s, so too old for a college freshman, uh, he dropped very soon within the first semester of college. 
Um, this was in order to get married to an Amy Jersil, who had no idea who he was within 48 hours of getting married. Reason being was um, supposedly he would pay her to get married in exchange for him receiving um, a green card and permanent residence in the US. Um, following their marriage, they went separate ways. Um, he actually moved to California and left her behind. This is touched up later on the trial, um, which is if he went to college in 1970, in the late 70s, now the trial is in 2008. Um, she could still recall that he left him very soon. He left her very soon following the marriage. Um, it's not confirmed if there was any monetary exchange um, in order to fulfill the marriage, but there was absolutely um, no romantic uh, bond shared between the two. Um, however, Gerhard Strider had attained his, um, his American citizenship and was one step closer to living his American dream. Um, his first destination in California was actually San Marino, California, which is only five minutes away from where we live. Um, this probably has to be my favorite part of the story because um, you never would have thought that one of the biggest American crimes could come so close to home. However, um, this is also one of the darkest moments in the story because a con artist who simply wanted to make his way in America and not in Germany ended up committing a murder because someone got um, too close on his trail. Um, after staying at one of the residents' homes, after he tricked them into making them believe um, that he was an heir to some place in the United Kingdom, um, there, he convinced a grandma, an old lady, and his, her son would visit often, but her son got suspicious. So he soon claimed that he would take this man and his wife on a vacation to France, even sending a fake postcard from France to the grandmother to make her believe that nothing was wrong. Um, but in fact, he murdered the two, no, he murdered the husband, the wife went missing. Um, their remains wouldn't be uncovered until 1994, um, but he was already suspicious in 1985 when he committed the act and moved to Connecticut and changed his name. Um, he was no longer Christian Gerhardt by this time. Now he was Christian Chichester. This name he stole from a teacher he had in either college or high school, but he had a crush on her, which was weird. But um, new name, new beginnings, but he's still on the run. If he goes back to California, he would easily be caught because he was very well known in San Marino. He was in the local newspaper. He was very involved in the community. Um, he soon found his way to Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, he had a brief job here as a computer manager for a security company. Um, this was only to make a new identity for himself and to, um, yeah, to protect himself. He wanted to make his way towards New York after failing to work in film production in Los Angeles, which was his initial dream, but uh, he wanted more. New York seemed more stable to him. His, um, his lie was that he got a radio job in New York. That's what he told his parents when he moved from Germany. Um, his name is no longer Christian uh, Christian Chichester. Now on his way to New York, he changed his name to Christian Crow. No, Christopher Crow. Um, this is because there was a producer in LA working on the Hitchcock series named Christopher Crow. And since no one in the area really knew of the show, he could easily get away with the fake name and claim that he was the man who produced the show. Um, now in New York, this is where he becomes Clark Rockefeller. Um, and the strange thing is he was so easily able to convince everyone around him because he had 
apparently the jawline of a Rockefeller, but he was also a very handsome man. He was also a very convincing man. Uh, he sold it. Uh, he sounded American. He had the the Bostonian, uh, no, Boston, Massachusetts. He had the New York accent. Um, he was able to, con not convince, he was able to marry a Sandra Boss. She was a CEO of McKinsey, um, McKinsey. So she was uh, CEO of McKinsey and she was actually his source of income. He didn't have a job, but because of the way he dressed, because of what he claimed to be, no one wanted to doubt that he was a Rockefeller. Um, he found his way into several, um, it's called aristocratic clubs in the area. He bought a yacht. He bought a three-story home in New York. He had a daughter. Um, but as time went on, Sandra Boss started to become more and more suspicious of uh, Rockefeller because he didn't have a source of income other than herself. He didn't have any tax returns. He, um, he didn't even have an active credit card. Um, and Rockefeller started to become more and more aware of her suspicions and the relationship started to get more and more abusive. Um, this led to the divorce, which led to his kidnapping of their daughter, uh, but he was soon apprehended. Um, this is over a span of, let's see, he came to America in 1972, the trials in 2008. This is a span of roughly 36 years. Quick math. Um, yeah, it's hard to believe any of this is true. It's an insane story, but it is 100% not just based on true events, not inspired by true events, but 100% true events. Um, Mark Seal, the author, is a journalist. He's written on several different um, big American crimes. Um... I do love the suspense of the story. New York Times goes on to say that it has the pace of a suspense novel, but it is in essence a documentary. And I really love that because I want to absorb true information, especially information that hits so close to home in San Marino. But um, you don't feel very intimate reading the book because there's no characters that you can really bond with because not a lot is said about the characters themselves other than their actions and their motives and their involvement with um, with the criminal Christian Gerhard Strider. Um, that's my only complaint about the book. I do wish that it was, um, that it hit, bit, hit closer emotionally. It only plays into our wanting to know more. It's, it is very suspenseful. And the pacing of it makes us want to read more and more and more because we're following a man's journey all the way from Germany to Connecticut to California and then to New York. Um, yeah, nothing more to say than it's just an absolutely crazy story that you don't really want to put down. Um, yeah, it's worth your time. It's worth reading. I know most people want a book that has more relatable characters, characters with more dialogue. The only dialogue you get in this story is from Mark Seal and the people he interviews. But again, a very, 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 com no, not compelling. <laughs> it's a very magnetizing, it's a very magnetizing story. You wanna read more and more and more. I like the book, I recommend it, you should read it, um, yeah, bye.